Okay, I, I wanted to try to talk about patterns, uh, patterns that occur in physical systems uh, and biological systems, as mentioned. Uh, and I want to do it from the point of view of a mathematician. Uh, so, a couple of years ago, uh, when faced uh, with thinking through what is in pattern formation, I happened to be at a uh, conference at uh, the Newton Institute in uh, Cambridge. And there were a number of people from different fields, mathematics, physics, biology. And so I went around and asked them, well, why do you study patterns? It was a conference on pattern formation. And uh, I thought I would start uh, with uh, some of the answers that I got. Uh, the first one is that uh, <laughs> they're just uh, pretty. And, uh, and just to try to drive this point home, uh, here are uh, pictures of uh, mud planes. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, this occurs when the um, under, underlying geology, some of the rocks are drying, and uh, you get this pattern forming. Well, we'll come back and I'll show you a little bit more. But notice it's, it's a kind of hexagonal structure, and uh, you see the same site, a kind of pattern uh, on leopard spots. And if you want to go into a laboratory, uh, this is an experiment on convection. So it's just a fluid layer. It's heated from below. And as you raise the temperature on the bottom, uh, the, uh, mo uh, the heat is, it goes from being conducted straight from the bottom to the top to convective motion. And uh, the picture that you see here, I think the dark spots are where the fluid is flowing down and where it's light, it's flowing up. Uh, or the other way around, but I think uh, that's correct. Uh, and again, you get this hexagonal array. And of course, in a uh, uh, controlled experiment, this is much more uh, convincingly hexagonal. Uh, there are other kinds of patterns which I'll call stripes, and you see here this, uh, these sand dunes, you just see this linear array of uh, patterns. See them in zebra stripes, and again in the experiments under different parameter values you get convective rolls as they're called. Now, something that's going to be very important for this talk this evening is that uh, I want to talk about patterns uh, that are not just stationary, all the pictures that I showed you were just of stationary patterns, but ones that have motion, uh, and yet there's still a kind of pattern that's involved. Uh, there's, uh, I have a colleague, or uh, I had a colleague in Houston, uh, in the physics department, Mike Gorman, and for many years he's worked on this pattern forming experiment, which is a uh, porous plug burner. Uh, you have gas and uh, air and fuel just coming up through the burner. If you look down on the top of the burner, it's just a circle. It's, pure, it's just a circle. Uh, so the whole thing is circularly symmetric. And you start getting flame fronts. So the fuel goes through, you ignite it, and the flame just sits up there. The uh, little uh, line is supposed to indicate the flame, uh, flame front. Uh, and you get pictures like this. So again, a pattern. Now, in dynamics, here are some of the things that Mike finds. Uh, what can you change? You can change the flow rate, uh, you can change the fuel, you can change the stoichiometry, that is the uh, uh, leanness or uh, uh, richness of the fuel. And when you do that, you start getting... And uh, there's a little prize if you know what the music is. <laughs> okay, so these were stationary patterns. And there's quite a, an array of these things, but this is perhaps a little bit more exciting. These rotating patterns, time evolution is the same as just rotating the pattern. Right. You don't understand just by looking at these pictures where these uh, states come from. Uh, now, on well, the standing wave, notice that there are lines of symmetry where, it, uh, where you have reflections that come, quite different from the rotating waves that we saw before. These are also time periodic, say. 